Okay, but seriously this time, uh, welcome to these streams. It turns out there are a lot of things that can go technically wrong with streaming old games. There are a lot of things that can go technically wrong with streaming, period. And most of them do go wrong with me. Uh, but, it's, you know, there's a whole other dimension of possibilities when you are, you know, converting an analog signal to digital and, and all that nonsense. So this took a sec, but we're here. Where's here? Here is in the Tetrisphere. Uh, for those who are not familiar, this is an absolutely delightful puzzle game that came out for the N64 and then never came out for anything else. It was it was never re-released, there was no sequel, uh, and that is the kind of game I would like to highlight in a new series of, of, of retro streaming, uh, stuff that was important to me and or to the, the guests who have come on the ETAO podcast. Uh, but uh, but that uh, are otherwise inaccessible. We're going to pay special attention to things that have never been re-released and don't run all that well on emulators even. N64 games, to my mind, never ran quite as well as I would have wished uh, emulation-wise. You know, whereas there are, there are plenty of obscurities for the SNES or Genesis that are absolutely worth your attention but fully emulatable. So if I'm going to get out old systems, I want to focus on stuff where there's a good reason to get out old systems. That is not, I want to make clear, any kind of anti-piracy stance. We're actually quite pro-piracy here here on the podcast. Um, yeah, I don't know of any fiercer form of preservation than piracy, really. But anyway, all that to say, we're going to play some games that bear fruit, uh, that are especially worth it uh, uh, when, uh, when played on their original hardware. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to start a new file, uh, as I think we will every time we do this. It was Drew last time, so who am I today? How many characters do we have? <laughs> I like to be Catterjunes and things, but I don't want to be Catter Cat Cutter Two. Oh, that's not good. Uh, my other default name. I should have counted those characters, huh? A little late for that now. So close. All right, now. All right, well, if I'm no longer Drew, well, you know what? Let's, <laughs> we're on this journey together. My name is Everybody's Talking at Once. That feels right. Let's do that. Let's pick our bot. Um, so Jack was who I played as back in the day. Um... What do speed and power even do? I do not remember. Well, we'll go with Jack for the moment. If somebody in stream played this game back in the day and knows uh, why that's a terrible choice, let me know uh, and uh, and we, we can adjust accordingly. Okay, I think there's no further ado necessary. Let's begin. I tried this earlier, but I hit a couple of technical snags. So we're going to start from the beginning uh, of Rescue, which is sort of the main mode. Um, this is a game where you play Tetris on a sphere, hence Tetris Sphere. Uh, and the goal of these sort of what I think of as the main levels uh, is to rescue this uh, little sphere, who I thought of as the dude at the center Although there's no, you know, explicit gendering of said sphere. Uh, the cute little big-eyed jobby uh, who escapes. So we want to clear enough space for this orb creature of varying size to get free. We can move stuff around. We can drop blocks. There are also items, uh, which, you know, basically just clear blocks. Blow, blow them up or magnet them away or magic them away in some way or other. Uh, we will collect those, and the, the longer we hold out... You know, the more of them we collect without making a mistake, basically, the, the nicer and more powerful a thing we can acquire. Deferred gratification. Um, I always waited for one of the really late ones as a kid. Um, as I said earlier in the stream that didn't go well, I, you know, how much of that was Solid's strategy and how much of it was just neurosis? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Let's find out by finding out how good an idea it is to wait for the really nice stuff. These glowy spheres give us time back, which is very helpful. We have that little ticking clock thing down in the little watch notion. Mm, 
The reason we're starting with Tetrasphere is that it is non-narrative. Um, it fits all the criteria we talked about, but it's not a game that requires sort of a serialized playthrough. So if, as I'm working out all the technical kinks, as I've been doing this evening, uh, causes us to lose a whole chunk, it's not the end of the world. We can start over, we can pick up. Uh, it's a little bit more of an arcade experience. We're going to play Mischief Makers, and uh, we're probably going to play Mystical Ninja Star and Goemon. Both of those are, you know, games that you want to play in sequence. Uh, we're probably going to do more or less completionist playthroughs of both. So we're starting with something a bit simpler, more straightforward, uh, less reliant on you following the thread. But again, equally lost to time, equally unre-released, uh, equally difficult to access in its in its purest and best form if you don't happen to have an actual factual N64 uh, kicking around. Which I do. I believe this is actually a launch unit in North America. Did later N64s in North America have the slot for the, the ill-fated 64 disk drive on the bottom? I believe they didn't. This one definitely does. You're free. Go with God. So we have this rocket. Um, I'm kind of holding out for something better. Uh, we're not, on these early levels, we don't really need an item, especially. Um, the typical thing is just to hang on to them and, until until you need them desperately, at which point you use them immediately. Um, yeah. You could hear there was kind of a combo going longer than I could actually see. Um, as I've said before about this game, it's kind of the puzzle game equivalent of walking away from an explosion you created without looking at it. There is something that kind of feels cool about the fact that the game doesn't pause itself and draw attention to that stuff. It just kind of it keeps going and you keep going. And especially on the later levels, you, you need to. You need to keep your attention focused on the next combo, the next thing. You can't, you can't rest on your laurels too much. Notice that my last move could just be dragging something out of the way. I don't have to do a big clear. Uh, all that matters is that uh, the, the, the thing we're rescuing can get out. And that we haven't, you know, made three mistakes before we uh, get to get to said rescuey. The items are pretty rare early on. I mean, you don't really need them, but still. These tunes are so chill. I really love, besides the music, I just really love the sound design in this game. Those whooshy noises and those uh, sort of wonderfully wet sounds as, as blocks get, uh, get cleared. so good, I'm sure there is, like, a robust community around it that I'm not aware of. Like I said, it just sort of, it, it passed the test that I set up for games, kind of inspired by, um, Mikey, uh, of movies with Mikey. You know, you, if you decide what's important to you, you turn it into an actual system, an actual scoring, uh, rubric, and then you may be surprised by what, uh, what jumps to the top of your list, and based on the criteria I set out, Tetrasphere is, uh, is, is a prime candidate. 
but again, I'm sure I'm sure there's a speedrunning scene. I'm I'm sure I'm sure it's not utterly forgotten. I'm not uh, taking the position that only I remember Tetrasphere, but I do love it, and I do want to keep the candle burning. So we got another item, so now we have the dynamite, which is better. Clears more blocks. We still don't really need it, so let's... I believe we can carry that to the next world, as it were. The next sequence of ten levels if we don't use it, so may as well. Oh yeah, you're not quite free, are you? Let's take care of that. You'll notice one of the ways that levels can be harder, in addition to sort of like changing the variety of pieces in that classic Tetrisy way, is just that the uh, the res or the rescuee can can get bigger, thus requiring more space to escape. Okay, the job was nice. Now we continue. Congratulations, you passed the first episode. Ready to try the next one? Sure. Let's do it. God, they're all bangers. All of these tunes. This is the kind of game where if I run out of things to say and I don't have someone else to come and talk to me about it, at some point, it might be perfectly worth it to just shut up <laughs> and have a chill time listening to the sounds of Tetrasphere. It's such a cool soundscape. Entrancing, right? I told this story in the uh, the earlier version of the stream that got lost at times, so I'll tell it again. But this was the first N sixty four game my dad got really into. He was he was really really into video games in the uh, the eight bit era, still a bit in the sixteen bit era. That was you know it was more me taking the lead, right? Like like I played <laughs> Zelda one the first time around, sitting on his lap. By the time Link to the Past came around, I was kind of the one taking the lead. But by the t by the time I got to you know, certainly Ocarina of Time, but even like Mario 64, he couldn't quite get into like the the 3D aspect of it. But this, which is like it is 3D, it's 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 quite conspicuously a sphere. But it's not really right. Like a, you play with the D-pad, um, you know, it's 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 easier to think of. You know, there's you don't have to manage a camera, which I think was part of what got him about Mario 64. So this was the first N64 game he got really into that we kind of you know had to had to line up and take turns on the, uh, the home console and all that. We should get him at some point on the stream to reminisce. Like I said, before I start doing stuff, because I think I would like to talk to people who have interesting things to say about the design of these games while I'm playing them. But yeah, I just wanted to be... Very sure I'm not going to waste their time <laughs> by screwing some of this up with my, uh, you know, poor streaming old manishness. Be sure to get that item. But we still haven't used an item this time out, but that's fine. We, we will.
I go back and forth. With a game like this, I, I certainly see the value, like I would as a viewer, and so I do as a, as a streamer, in just kind of hanging out, having a nice chill time. I think in general, there being someone on here besides me to talk is probably not a bad idea. I don't know. I do an interview show. I don't do a show where just I talk. I'm... Is it interesting to just hang out with me? I don't know. What do I know about anything? I know a lot about Tetrasphere. Just feels so nice to clear large chunks of it. Oh, the slide feels nice, and the little garbage blocks falling away feels nice. Much is made about game feel. This game, this game feels very good in regards to game feel. That was the deep tissue game design analysis you came for. So what is it, right? What is it that makes it feel so good? It's um. It's the responsiveness of the controls. It's the way the sound and the visuals play off each other. This game is is all but unmatched as far as vibes. <laughs> it's like everything is very consistent with that, like very very chill but slightly cartoony. That heightened. You know, there there are stakes and it can be stressful, but even even in stress, it's vaguely chill. <laughs> I mean, this isn't very stressful right now. We haven't even heard the uh, you're running out of time sound once, I don't think, but we'll, we'll be hearing it a lot in the later levels if we get that far. But even then, right, like... Your buzz is not harsh, even, even when things are intense, which I appreciate. I feel like um, this is something some recent iterations of, of Tetris, not Tetrisphere, but you know Tetris, uh, <laughs> Sphereless Tetris, have, have have you know somewhat captured as well. The Tetris uh, effect was that the new one, the super expensive luxury Tetris that had PSVR integration. It has something of a similar tone, at least on some levels. This is the best item, or at least the, the last item. <laughs> Whether it's objectively the best, I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll just go ahead and use it on 210. Let's do it. We live once. Blast this thing with a crazy orbital laser. So what's cool about that item is it's sort of up to you whether you want to use it to blow away an area that is that is very wide or very deep, but you sort of can't do both. So there's even once you've decided to use the item and spend spend all this. There was the sound. <laughs> there was the you've been talking about the game more than playing it sound. Um, even once you've made the strategic decision to spend the item, you still have more more choices to make, which is kind of cool. Periscope. This is maybe my first time streaming on Periscope. How does Periscope work? It's like a Twitter thing, right? <laughs> You're seeing this as a tweet, probably. So I imagine you get more people for less time, as a rule, because it's probably a lot easier to just happen upon it and be like, oh, some guy's playing Tetrisphere. Oh, he's, he's not a guy I care about. 
<laughs> or conversely, oh, oh, Drew's playing something. Oh, it's Tetrisphere. I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't care. Um, fleeting attention, it seems to me, would be would be the market. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe that's a, a Twitter stereotype, a vicious Twitter stereotype. And that's World Two. I think we can do World Three. Let's do it, and then we'll call it. Episode two down. I keep calling them worlds, but they're called episodes. Episode two down. It's not always going to be this easy. True. True. All too true. Okay. feel like what you're supposed to do when you stream stuff. <laughs> Not to make all the talk on the stream about streaming, but that's I'm newer to streaming than I am to Tetrisphere. I, what you're supposed to do is have your big dumb face in the corner. You're supposed to have cruft on the left and right, because I think certain platforms like YouTube are going to make this 16.9, even if even if the game is in, is in 4.3. Um, I don't know. I kind of just want to capture and show you this pristine, beautiful footage and talk at you. The stuff I'm planning to stream, I'm, I'm pretty, like, I understand that some of that stuff is, is utilitarian, right? It's, it's people not wanting to get copyright struck. The stuff I'm streaming, it's relatively unlikely to happen. So I feel like that frees me up to just show you these beautiful games. Because games of this era had this, this real specific set of looks to them. I just kind of want you to enjoy that. If you're Chromecasting me, like, like, make, make me your, make me, make this your screen. Put it on. Chill out. Enjoy Tetrisphere. I don't know, I feel like I maybe consume streams differently than other people, too, so I have a weird, a weird sense of how other people might do so. So these, this is where things start getting not just harder, but sort of longer. Thicker spheres and bigger bigger dudes to rescue. I keep calling them dudes, but there's no canonical gender to the, uh, the sphere at the center of the sphere. My dad and I always called them dudes, so... Old habits die hard. <laughs> Free. Wow, we got to the orbital laser really quick there. We must have hit a bunch of items. If I remember right, 3-9 is a beast, so we may use it there. Although, I mean, it makes sense to use it sooner than later, because then we're building up more items. We've already sort of started here, so let's we'll use it next one. See, this is this is me. This is me. The deferred gratification thing, right? Again, like, is this is this smart play? Probably not. It's just see, right there, we just wasted an item. That's not optimal. Whenever you see one of those little orange explodey glows, that's that's us getting an item, or or maybe not getting one if I'm being pig-headed and keeping them forever. So let's let's stop setting on it. Let's do this thing. Those are handy.
still not out though. Terrible, terrible freedom. Okay. Okay, so the glow means there's a like block below it. So you're getting like layers. And that's what you get the time bonus for, is, is taking advantage of, of the three dimensions that we are in, this being Tetrasphere. Saint your grandpa's strictly two-dimensional Tetris. It's the 1990s, goddammit, and our, tetra our Tetris scenarios are spherical. Alright, alright, close. Slippery. So one of the dangers is, as things are disappearing, you can do what you think is a valid move and would have been a valid move, but it's not a valid move by the time you do it. So I lost a very nice item. And my dignity. <laughs> but that is literally the first mistake we've made in these um, 37 stages we've done just now. So I should probably walk it off and get over it. Not that it's the only suboptimal thing I've done, but it's the only, you know, like, mistake with a capital M. It's the only time I have taken damage, lost a heart, lost my item, shamed myself, etc. <laughs> so, it's alright. Could be a lot worse. Let's get that item. Yeah, there we go. I remember in the later levels, my dad and I just being like, when is this is this dude going to show up? It feels very long later on. You will not see those really intense levels tonight, but you will see the dude getting really big, which is definitely a challenge. 310, I believe, he's quite big. This item we have now, I think, just gets rid of a semi-random assortment of tetraminos all over, all over the sphere, which is not as exciting to me as a, a targeted strike. Both because of the nature of this mode and just because those of you who've watched me stream anything or heard me on the podcast know that I am, I am not a gambler by nature. Welcome to 310. We're going to go ahead and do that. We got the 
orbital laser. We'll use that as soon as we feel the least bit stuck. Large friend. I believe even the little light purple garbage blocks will stop him from escaping, so we may have to just drag something across there. But anyway, we're not we're not quite done anyway. I don't remember how, how the magnet works, so let's go for a spectacular finish. Be free. We did it. We're going to say continue just so we can see the victory message. I don't remember if you see the victory message if you say exit. Great. Have you tried gravity combos? Keep playing for the victory. Uh, we have been messing with gravity combos a little. We will have to use them more later. Uh, that's when blocks fall on other blocks, obviously. And they fall in because because fear. All right, well, um, again, the point is more to get into some narrative games, um, but I think we will come back to Tetrasphere at some point, because this, this just chills me out in a way that not many games do, not many things do, really. We're going to finish this one level just to see whether we have to do a whole world at a time next time, because I don't remember that. Okay, so if we are on 4-2 and we leave, I think when we go back, yeah, okay, we can start right at 4-2. That's cool, that's cool. Okay, great. Well, thank you for joining me, those who have stopped by. Um, have a lovely time, a lovely evening, a lovely day, a lovely whatever time it is, wherever you are. And, uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, if you're here because you like the podcast, which is, <laughs> which if you're here is pretty likely. Um, we are going to have, uh, Chell Wong on next time. He did the music for Kine and is doing the music, uh, for the new It's Anecdotal game. Uh, it's a good conversation. Uh, yeah. Tune in. Enjoy it. Live it. See you soon.